Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 1. Praise the Lord. Father in heaven, as we're turning to Romans chapter 1 again, uh, may uh, your word be impactful in our lives to bring about transformation supernaturally as uh, the word of God finds root deep within our heart and brings forth fruit to your glory. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Now, when we're looking at uh, Romans, we're in Romans in our Sunday school. And uh, so our, our Sunday school, even though we've been doing Sunday school on Zoom and different things. Uh, but in Romans chapter 1, the epistle of Paul to the Romans. And, and so notice what Paul says. He's a slave of Jesus Christ. And he's called to be an apostle separated to the gospel of God. And the Bible goes on and say in Romans 1, 2, uh, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Verse 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, means his human lineage. He was born, he's a, he's a son of David. He's in the tribe of Judah. And verse 4 says, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Okay, now in Romans 1, 4, and uh, as we look at these first verses, the resurrection of Jesus Christ declares that he's God. Okay, you don't have to look any further. And at different times, and we have a lot of what's called uh, apologists, people who defend the scriptures, defend us in the faith and all that, and, and uh, many, many do a great job. But for us as born-again believers, Christians, you know, this is, you can't get any higher, any better than this. Romans 1, 4, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is, it declares uh, and it proclaims that Jesus is God. Everybody understand what, what it's saying? That's all you need to know. See, um, he was a human being, and that's why we, we look at that verse uh, in verse uh, 3, Romans 1, 3. See, the gospel is all about Jesus Christ, his son, Jesus Christ. It's not about human beings. It's not about works. It's not about anything we do. It's all about Jesus Christ. Jesus means he's our Savior. Christ, he's the Messiah. He's the anointed one. No one else can do what, he, what he's done now. Uh, and so the Bible says in verse 3, he was born of the seed or the offspring of David according to the flesh. Okay? So, in other words, he's from the lineage of David, the tribe of Judah. That's why in the book of Revelation, he's called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And this is the first point that we're looking at making today. So he's a real human being. He's God and he's man. And he became man 2,000 years ago, and he's going to be man throughout the rest of eternity. He's never going to stop being man, and he never stopped being God. And the resurrection... Uh, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in verse 4. Uh, the, and see, it declares uh, that Jesus Christ is God, the, he's the Son of God, which means he's God the Son. He's God and he's with power. He has all power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And we got a grip on that? And so if anybody... You're in, a, you know, you're in a discussion, and people, well, Jesus was, uh, he's just a human being, and uh, he's a good teacher, and that's what people say today. They've been saying that for, for some time. Well, Jesus, he's a good teacher. You know, I mean, he was a prophet. He was God's man, and uh, he did these things, but he's not God. Oh, yes, he is. 
How you know he's God? He rose from the dead. Okay? The scriptures declare that. So who else? Who else? See, when we're looking at that, sometimes we get so familiar with scripture. But who else claimed to rise from the dead? No other, no other prophet, no other true prophet or false prophet. Uh, who, who else? I mean, you're looking at all the uh, teachings from every other teacher. They might have said, here's the way. But only Jesus said, I'm the way. <laughs> I'm the way. So here's, here's how, how you get life. Jesus said, I'm the life. You know, so I'm the way. And they said, well, here, we're going to lead you in the truth. Jesus says, I'm the truth. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, I mean, who else, who else could be on the face of the earth throughout all time and, and say, you can kill this body, and in three days I'm getting up? See that this and this is this is a powerful statement. Any any comments so far? You can't get any better than this. I mean, and so all the evidence that points to the fact that Jesus died, and then all the evidence that points to the fact that he rose from the dead. That's all we need to know. He's declared. Nobody has no nobody has come near doing this. And what was the uh, uh, great uh, magician or a year in, in the 20s, 1920s and 30s? Uh, did all, Houdini. And he promised that he was going to speak from the grave, after the grave. He's going to speak. He's going to find a way to get back. We haven't heard a thing from him. <laughs> you know, because, uh, I mean, the Bible tells us that wait, wait, once you leave here, you know, uh, there, there's no coming back. And after death is the judgment. So, but, but again, the first point I'm, I'm making is that you don't have to be so schooled and have every question answered. This is the one. He rose from the dead. And so Jesus is more than a good teacher because if I walked around here, you know, these last 40 years telling you that, hey, I'll tell you what, when I die, I'm going to rise from the dead. He said, well, that Jewish is a good teacher. How can I be a good teacher? I'm lying to you because I tell you right now, I can't rise from the dead without the power of God. Jesus said, uh, if you kill this body in three days, he says, I'll raise it up. He was raised up by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He's God. And so if you look at Romans 1, 4, that's all you need to know. Romans 1, 3, and 4 He's a human being born of the seed of David. He's, he, so he's, a, he's very man of very man. He's man. He's a human being. But he never ceased to be God. He's God. Nobody else can decide I'm getting up from the grave. <laughs> I mean, man, I got, man, this is it. Comments. You don't, have to, you don't have to go any further than this. Go ahead, brother. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, amen, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's the first point we're trying to make here, here today, as, we're, as we're studying in our Sunday school in Romans. Number one, Jesus is God. He's declared to be God. So, when we go back to Paul, what he says in 1 1, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, a slave of Jesus Christ. And he says, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. So, Paul, he's an apostle, means he was one sent, and he was sent specially. We know his story in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 9. He was on the road to Damascus. And he was killing Christians. He was putting Christians in jail. The Lord Jesus Christ appears to him brighter than the noonday sun and uh, knocks Paul down to the ground. And uh, he says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutes. Okay, that, that's his story. Acts 9, you, you find the same thing in Acts 22, Acts 26. Paul lived, you know, based on that story. He said, this is what happened. 
So later on, he tells King Agrippa, he says, I wasn't disobedient to the heavenly vision. And the proof that Paul was who he said he was, that he come from Saul of Tarsus to be Paul the apostle, is the life he lived. So it just wasn't, he said, I, I, you know, I had this vision 30, 40 years ago, and nothing else has happened. No, he's, I mean, look how he lives. He says, I was not disobedient. And so that's the idea as a Christian. So and I say to you, I'm a born-again Christian. You know, I, I, I've trusted in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. And the evidence is that I go back 46 years, 47 now, I go back 47 years, I remember my profession of faith. I remember praying and asking uh, the Lord Jesus Christ to save me and to deliver me from my sins. Understood how, how sinful I was. There's no way to get to heaven but through him. And, he, and so the blood of Jesus had to cover me. And so you say, okay, you, I remember that. Third Sunday in, in March, 1974. So, but, uh, but I say, but I'm not looking at that in itself and saying that's what makes me a Christian I'm looking at once, once I did that so the last you know so 47 years I've been walking with the Lord that's the idea so Jesus said to those who believe he said if you continue in my what if you can my word right if you continue any other comments and so Paul he said that's what he meant by a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, separated or set apart. Separated means that that's what he did. After the Lord saved him, he becomes Paul, uh, the apostle, and his life is lived, separated unto the gospel. And that's how we as believers so we're not apostles in the sense that we are sent like the Apostle Paul with special sign gifts, but we are sent by God to represent him in this world. We are indwelt with the Holy Spirit, and we're separated to the gospel. And that's why this year I'm saying with all that's going on, what is my theme? What's the theme for this year is that it's a new year, but it's the same message. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anybody want to add anything? Anybody want to say anything? That, that, that doesn't change. Nothing else. So you can teach a person to uh, be more socially conscious. You can, uh, you can deal with all the uh, uh, situations with which we have, you know, so you can deal with COVID. You can deal with racism. You can deal with sexism. You can deal with all these kind of things. But what we're called to be is separated unto the gospel because only the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Nothing else is going to save you. So you can, you, know, you can be a great doctor. You can be a lawyer. You can be a, a, a social administrator. You can be a, a, a sociologist. A, you, know, you can be a philosopher. You can, none of that saves. None of that. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, is what saves. Any other comments? So that's where we stand. So Sunday I was saying that uh, you, we got to stand and then we don't compromise. Amen. And then there's being humble to trust God and then there is a prepared heart. So you look at that again. So, um, we stand on the gospel truth and more and more people are, are looking at, well, Okay, like so our brother just said, uh, he's a good teacher. Well, he can't be a good teacher if he's lying. And so if he did not raise from the dead, if he wasn't risen from the dead, and again, we got Palm Sunday coming up, if he didn't raise from the dead, then he's not telling the truth. And so if he's not telling the truth, either he's lying or he's confused. But neither one of those things are true. He's the Lord he, and everything he said. So there was a song I used to sing at Pilgrim, and I love it. He said he would, and he did. There's nothing he didn't accomplish. He's God. <laughs> Praise the Lord, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what we ought to be, separated unto the gospel. So in our homes, on the job, 
at the YMCA, very separated unto the gospel of Jesus Christ. With our children, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, to teach them, uh, let them know this is what life is all about. And when you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit, now you can live an overcoming life. You overcome all the things that the adversaries in life, the adver adversarial conditions, you overcome it all because you have Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. Everybody with me? Okay. So if you got Jesus... <laughs> I was listening to a, a preacher the other day, and uh, he was saying that uh, uh, a guy, guy said, there are two guys talking. Let's say guy A and guy B. Uh, so guy um, B was talking about an, another man, guy C. He said, guy C died. Okay, guy C died. He said, then, man, he was worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. And guy B, who was talking about guy C, the rich man who died, guy B turns to guy A, and he says to guy A, he says, you'll never have what guy C had. How you feel about that? You're never going to have what he had. And, and guy A said, I, I got you, I understand. He said, but I got something that guy C won't have. He'll never have what I had, what I have. So what's that? He said, enough. Enough. <laughs> I said, hallelujah. He said, I got enough. I got Jesus. I got enough. And, and, and man, I said, man, that, that'll preach, brother. I got enough. Because Peter said, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. He says, God will give us what we need according to his riches and glory. Paul, Paul and Peter. We got enough. You got, you got Jesus. What's the songwriter say? Just give me Jesus. He's enough. He's enough. So Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God knows what you have need of. He'll supply it. So when we look at these things, it's, I got Jesus. He says, that man you're talking about, guy C, that left millions and millions and millions of dollars, had all that, but he never had enough because those things don't satisfy. But it's my, I'm, I'm here, I'm a witness, brothers and sisters, that, man, when you got Jesus and you start living according to the word of God, man, I, you know, you find yourself, hey, man, I got enough. I got Jesus. Am I making sense? Everybody agree with me? Hey, man, any, any comments? And, and so it doesn't mean that you're going to do the, uh, that I'm not going to do the best I can and, and, you know, conserve and all this. That's because I got Jesus. I want, to, I want to do what the word of God calls me to do. But I'm not in, in the rat race to get more and more and more because I got Jesus. I got, he's enough. So the apostle says he's a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Now, a bond servant means he's a slave. What do you think about that word slave? What is Paul saying? I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, my sister. So a slave does what his master wants. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord, my brother. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Good comments. And so uh, a bond slave, because see, Paul is going to say some, say some things later. And one of the things that, uh, again, as I, we were um, talking about, we often say, it's, we, we talk about things like free will. What the Bible teaches is that, again, we're subject. To, to outside forces. So, and so like I was saying on uh, Sunday with, with uh, my buddy and I, and, uh, he had a little uh, car problem, and uh, he said to me, uh, uh, I, and I was there, and I said, well, look, man, uh, uh, here's what I'll do for you, and then I'll do this, and I'll do it, I'll pick you up. And so uh, he called back or he texted me, he said, my wife is coming. She said, she said I'll get you. 
And so later on we talked about it. He said, you know, we were talking about how circumstances. He said, because I, I told him, I said, look, if it's between me and your wife, you better choose your wife all the time. And he told me, he said, wasn't no choice to make. I had no free will. <laughs> he said, my wife said she was coming. So that meant <laughs> I'm doing what she's saying. I said, you got to, uh, this is what we're saying, that as human beings, factors outside of us help us to make decisions as to what we're going to do. And, and so only God is free to just say, here's what I'm going to do. And outside factors don't change any of that because he's God. And uh, I say, but that's a good way to put it. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. So Paul says, I'm a bond servant. And the idea, he says, I'm, and I'm voluntarily, I'm willing, I'm willing to be committed, sold out. I'm willing to do what my master says. And that's a part of what happens when we come to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit writes God's laws in our hearts and minds. And now, voluntarily, we want to do what's right. The goal is not that we're, the goal is, I'm not trying to be perfect. We're trying to walk in the Spirit to be obedient. Anybody, anybody else want to got a comment you want to add? Anybody? Go ahead, my sister. Yes. They want to feel the lust of the flesh. And they'll say, well, you know, uh, these holier than thou people, <laughs> you know, people trying to be in these goody two shoes. But my thing is, as believers in Christ, it's not about, you know, trying to be a goody two shoes or holier than thou. It's about being obedient to the word of God. Amen. And it's like, you know, yes, we're going to sin as we are in this flesh, but. That is not our aim. That is not our purpose. We don't premeditate it. You know, our goal is to be conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. When people see us, they can see Christ in us. And so when we want to live according to the word of God, we can't let those people, you know, say, oh, you're just trying to be a goody too. You know, we can't let that thwart us. Amen. How, what Christ wants us to be, you know. Good word, so, my sister. Know, Whatever people say about me, they just have to say about me. <laughs> Amen. They have God to answer to. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, that, that's just one thing that's been on my mind lately because I just hear it all the time. You know, people talk about other people for that reason because they want to do what's righteous. You know, and they'll talk about them like, well, if you ask me, this is what I'll do. It's like that person wants to do what Christ says do. You know, and that's how, you know, we need to be. Amen, my sister. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Anybody else want to add uh, anything? And uh, so, and I, I agree with what you're saying. If we drop down to verse, uh, in the same chapter, uh, look at verse uh, 32, Romans 1 and 32, just to, not to add, but just to uh, uh, confirm what you were saying. So in Romans 1.32, it says, talking about people who are not living right, it says, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. And these are, these are the, the different sins, how people live their lives in sins. He says, not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them. See, people who are evil and wicked, uh, and what the Bible is saying here, they not only do evil and wicked things, but they approve of others who are going to be living the same way they live. Does this make, uh, uh, this make uh, sense with you? Yes, because again, it says they approve of those who practice them. And so when you are called a goody two-shoes or you holier than thou and you just living for Christ, people don't approve 
of what you're doing because they would approve of what you're doing as long as you were doing what they do. And so that's how when we get saved, what happens is uh, we don't walk away from friends. They walk away from us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Too much light. <laughs> See, when I was a creature of the darkness, all the folks who were creatures of darkness, they didn't, we all got along well. But when God takes you out of the darkness and places you in the light, and all of a sudden, you, you know, you show up where somebody, oh, man, that's too much light for me. And so they, and they let you know, oh, here come preacher so-and-so. Here come deacon so-and-so. Oh, here comes so-and-so. He didn't found religion and all this. And there's ways that they say things, and you understand they become uncomfortable because, and, and again, it's just that you are now living for Christ out of the depths of your heart. Anybody else want to add anything or want to confirm something? Yes, sir, my brother. I guess my, my question, what, what Sister Winnie and everybody is saying, what Paul is saying, he was free. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's a lot of lessons. So my point being is to take that stand of slave of Jesus Christ. In this society we in, do we have the mindset when culture push back to the degree that it's gonna cost us something? Do, do, is there the sense that the American Christian can stand? Right, yeah, will yes. Will they stay the course or will they, at some point, fall under and just be just like everybody else? Good question. Did you have your hand up, brother? Okay. And, and so the one thing that, that we do, uh, we're, we're, just, we're talking about just things we do around the church. And what we have to be, what we're called to be, and that's what prayer does, we need to be proactive and not reactive so the, the bible will tell us in hebrews we i mean we're seeing this day coming and the more and more that we see it then we're called to encourage one another provoke one another to love and good works and so that's why one of the things in coming to church we come to church and it's not just to come to church people say well, we come to church and i got fed the idea from ephesians is that we come to church so that we can encourage someone else. And so as we're fed, then we, we encourage, hey, brother, we see somebody, you know, we pray for them. And it's the body that builds itself up. And so, brother, Lee, uh, uh, brother I, I say this, that when we're in situations where we're looking for one man to be a one-man show and a one-man band and do all kind of things, and so and we come and we don't, we're not really participating, when it gets tough, it's just like physically, you know, uh, we go down, we work out. And so, and if you have to go down and work out, you're already accustomed to working out. But if you don't do anything and you go down to, the, you go down to work out and you're not used to doing anything, it's going to be extremely tough because you're not used to doing anything. And uh, so you look and you see, I mean, people walking, people doing things. So that, uh, because if we stop doing that, and when church people are only dependent upon their leaders, it's going to be hard for them to stand. Go ahead, my brother. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir.
Yes. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good word, brother. Tony Evans said it this way. He said, in America, we have been playing uh, in front of the home team. And so people cheered, so to speak, good behavior and all this. And so uh, he said, the problem is now that we're, now we're not the home team. We're playing in a stadium where we are the team that is foreign. We are the, and so people are booing us. And he says, you know, it's been, uh, any, any team will tell you it's easier to play at home than it is to play away. He says, so right now we're headed toward, we're playing away. So where people would say, that's a good thing. I, I, you know, I, I agree with that. Now people, oh, hold up. I don't, yeah, I don't like that at all. And when you look at this cake situation, brother, I appreciate you sharing that. Cause, because uh, the baker said, you know, I mean, uh, I will sell you some cake, whatever cake, I, you know, I can sell you cakes or cakes here. Only thing I can't do, I'm not going to use my creativity, God-given creativity, to create that kind of cake. And he, and he, and he says, but I, will sh uh, I can point you to other bakeries where they will do this, good bakeries. And so, as you said, no, they, they wanted to make him. And so he said, no, I can't do it because of my conscience. It used to be that uh, we, uh, we in the Christian churches, we received an exemption because of our conscience. Now they're saying, not anymore. No, you're going to do what we tell you to do. And, and again, it started, uh, I think, in 2008 or so forth when... Uh, there were people, and the, they started in the military because the military is something that uh, you can control a little bit. And so then they try to use it in the military to bring it out into the, to the, uh, to the public. But they, they were telling um, uh, chaplains, either you will do what we tell you to do, marry who we tell you to do, or you get out. And since we weren't in the military, many times that, that just kind of went over our heads. You say, man, you can't do that. I mean, you can't make a man. And then also in the medical field, they're looking at, okay, unless we, you perform this certain operation that we're, we're demanding that you do this, and then drug us, unless you give this drug out, the day after, then you're done. And so if before they said, well, okay, we, don't, we understand it's your privilege. So I go over here to a drugstore, there's more than one person working. And, and I say, uh, you know, I, I, can't give, I can't give out this pill. Uh, and so, uh, oh, well, okay, you, don't, you know, you want to you wanna serve this person? Now they're saying, no, no, uh, we know we can get served. We know that, but not you going to serve. You are going to give up your conviction. That's where we are, uh, we are now. So, brothers, and to answer that question, I'm praying that, Lord, uh, you have to help us to stand. Because I'm not going to say, man, I stand. Because, you know, again, the Bible says, you who think you stand. <laughs> what do you say, sister? Take, Take heed, heed lest you fall. So I'm going, Father, uh, uh, Lord, you, if you don't hold me up. So, again, I go back to I got to stand. I can't compromise. I need to humble myself before the Lord and prepare my heart. Lord, I know what's coming. I know what's coming. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Influence me. Empower me. Because without that, I won't stand. And uh, so uh, I definitely, uh, th those are great questions. Great questions. And so we're looking at Paul separated to the gospel of God. And notice in verse 2, and we're going to stop here in just a minute. 
uh, Romans 1, 2, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So when we look at, at that, then again, it's the scriptures, the scriptures, it's the scriptures. Everybody with me? Now, uh, before we stop, go to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, I'm going to read the first uh, four or five verses, or maybe, maybe six of verses, Romans 15. The scriptures, and so notice what it says here in Romans chapter 15, verse 1. We then who are strong are to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written... The reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. In other words, Christ took the fall. He took the burden. Verse 4, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and hope of the scriptures, excuse me, th we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Praise the Lord. You see that? Let me read that again. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So, see, our hope that's not based upon the word of God is a false hope. But our hope that's built upon the word of God, it will edify us, it will give us understanding, and again, it'll give us the, the patience and the strengthening of the scriptures. I was talking to uh, one of our brothers in Christ, you know, uh, patience, patience. That's what, what I mean, God, God uh, one of the things he delights in transforming us is he makes us patient. And by patient, he, mean, he shows us, here is, your, here is my will. Will you continue to do my will? even though it doesn't look like it's working out. It you know, and you say, well, look, this ain't working. And what God wants us to understand, get to in patience is that, well, what if it doesn't work? You know, and I, I remember one time praying about something when we were, had the uh, GYCC, just praying about it. And, and so and I'm praying, and, uh, and I say to the Lord in prayer silently, I said, Father, Man, I'm going to look awful stupid if you don't come through with this. And, and again, the answer come in my mind so you, don't, so you won't look stupid for me. Is it too much to ask you to look stupid for me? And I'm going, I got you, Father. Because Jesus looked like a failure for me. You know, I mean, they, 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 they mocked him all this, and Jesus was providing my salvation. And I said, Father, forgive me. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't mind looking stupid for you, or looking silly for you, looking dumb. And since then, I've been able to put up with stuff because one person told me, he said, the only reason you're a Christian is because you're weak. <laughs> you, you can't handle life. And I said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. I can't handle life. Said, but, but I'm so glad. I got a friend. I got a savior. I, I got a companion. I got someone who walked with me and talked with me and helped me get through. I can't, no, you're right. I need a crutch. I can't get through this stuff all by myself. And, that, and this was before you started dealing with, with life, you know, and you're going, yeah. So when, when God is there to help you get through, you know, you know like, uh, like we talked, uh, uh, my brother, you were in the hospital and you got an operation and somebody there talking to you about this operation, but they ain't going through the operation. <laughs> you listening to him, but you, but you going, yeah, but you ain't going in the room. <laughs> you walking out of the hospital. I'm going into surgery. There's a big difference. But God helps us get through. Uh, I'm running a little late, so let's, let's close in, in prayer. Just going through Romans, because we're going through this in our Sunday school. Just wanted to add some stuff in the book of Romans. So today we're looking at, man, Jesus is God. And Paul was separated unto the gospel. Okay? Father, thank you for your word. 
And may we continue to live for Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Thank you, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. <laughs>